Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a two pipe fan coil unit. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. So we're working on a fan coil unit. We have a complaint that there's no heat. Let's begin by taking off this access panel. First things first, I got a little bit of water on me, but that just might be from poor insulation, which yeah, I can see the valve over there is just sweating. So we are currently in cooling mode. So these two pipes above here is a supply and return for chilled water and we have electric heaters in here let's go ahead and open up our electrical panel which is going to be this piece right here and see what's going on all right this is what we have here it's honestly a lot better than one of the last videos that i posted on a similar unit all right, there's our actuator all right thermostat is now off let's go ahead and set this to heating and cooling and test all the functions for anything what i did notice is look at that valve how it's sweating could even hear the water passing through so you're definitely going to have cold temperatures when you run this unit up above there's like a little handle and i can feel it's completely open plus of course we hear the water running so no matter what we're going to get cooling that valve is stuck open is the actuary press this and you can pop it out as I popped it out it closed as you can see it's to the right and it's sturdy so that means it's closed once you energize this this piece is gonna be free and you can move it to the left and that will be open I just mounted it back and it is much quieter I'm moving it by hand right now and here making noise and right there close I'll run it back again basically I just push down on that stick so listen as I push down right now water and I'm gonna let go listen to how it goes quiet right there so now we're opening and closing so it's closed not sure why I got stuck like that but let's go ahead and run the thermostat we have an upgraded digital thermostat in this one. Let's start with cooling. So room temperature is 66, and we're gonna drop a set temperature below the room. It's blinking, so it's on a timer. Right there, cool on. All right, the fan started. Then this light right now is currently lit. So this is the relay. Relay number one is for cooling. And if I fill up above, Yep, I can feel the valve is open, so we should be getting cooling. Let's just go ahead and check temperatures. Hopefully you guys can see the temperature, but we're at 56.7 and dropping. So we definitely have cooling. Let's go ahead and turn the cooling off, and I want to see that actuator close. We're going to put the system on off right now. Looks like to me, yep, this is still fully open even though the relay stopped calling strange looks like water is still going through i would like to check voltage and all that stuff but let's just test the heat real quick and see exactly what's happening there so i set it to heat 77 room was at 66 and the heat should be on all right i'm gonna set the meter to amps and I know this thick wire is for a heater. 7.89, 8 amps. 8 amps. You know, I heard something seem like it might have been opening or closing. Was that this valve? Nope. So we got heat and cooling mixing. Let's check the temperature. All right, here's our thermometer. We have 55.6 degrees. I can see it from here. We're still pulling eight amps. So that electrical heater is on. And it was like I suspected, we're pushing water through that coil. All right, y'all can see we got eight amps. Let me pull this thing out, this actuator. 
I can feel it's open. It's open right there, you see? How it's just constant like that. I mean, it's calling. Let's uh, check voltage in this thing. We got two wires here. All right, so this is open. The only time this really should be open is if it is energized. So this is an actuator for 120 volts. So the only time it should be open is if there was 120 across this. We have nothing across that. Let's go from one to ground, one side to ground. Two volts, nothing. Two volts, nothing. So it's looking like this is bad because when it's de-energized, it's supposed to just spring back. It has a spring return, but it's staying open. So this is definitely bad here. Interesting. So it does open, but it doesn't spring back. Turn the unit off. This is still free. So it would allow water if it was on there. And I can hear the water running. So here's the valve and you have this little piece here. By adjusting that, you can open and close this. So I want to try to close it. Listen to the sound, so I don't know if you guys can hear through the video, but you can hear the water. Right there, it's quiet. Now it's closed. And now it's opening on its own. Closed. You let go and it's opening. So something gotta hold this closed while I test it. I can still hear it squeezing through. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna close this. And that's gonna close our water supply. I can hear the water stopped. And so, oh, got a little bit of a leak here, the packing. You could just tighten down on this nut and I'll hold that back. But for now, I really just wanna test the heating. So now there's no water going through the coil. Let's go ahead and test the electric heat. Got a relay here. Let's check the coil. Got, we got 120 across the coil, so it should be calling for heat. And let's check across points, 120. So the relay's not closing. Got 120 on one leg to ground, the other one, nothing. So the relay is actually calling to energize and it's not closing. Interesting. So I guess now we have a bad relay. I guess sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we got a bad relay. If that energy, if that coils has 120, those points should be closed, energizing our heater. So let's start with changing that. I was doing a service call for another unit and I actually have one in my bag. It's the exact relay. So I'm just gonna quickly just transfer over the wires just to see if this thing engages. All right, so I just put that relay in there just so I can do a quick test. And there we go. Now we have amps. So sometimes this thing was starting, sometimes it wasn't. So we had a bad relay and then this thing it's constantly staying open. So I closed the hand valve. So now we got amps pulling, fan is running, and this is closed by hand. Let's see if we got heat. All right, so I let the heat run for a bit and we are at just about 90 degrees. We got 89.8 degrees. So definitely bad relay. We replaced that. It was coming on the first time, but then it didn't the next time. So I'm glad I caught that. So I just need to mount the relay. And then from there, we gotta see what's going on. I did respond to cooling the first time, but how come it didn't spring back? I'm assuming that the actuator is bad. Yep, we're at 90 degrees. Got the valves closed by hand. So what I wanna do is open that back up with a new actuator and see if that springs back and actually sees the valve closed so we can have this automatically slowly rising up got a new actuator right here system is on off the spring should have spring back but look this thing was open there was no voltage there 
this is the way it should be when it's off. Nice, it's nice, and you can't move. You can bypass this manually, like this. Put some pressure, and you manually open it. But when it loses power, it's supposed to spring back. Like that, spring back and close this valve. So that's what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and change this and see if this springs back when you don't call for cooling and see if it opens if you do call for cooling. So let's see what happens. All right, here's the new actuator. Just wanna quickly test system is on off. And we have no voltage across. Put the system on cooling. We put it on cooling. Right there, we got 120 volts. And this is slowly opening. Good. All right, let it fully open. You can see this is now open. Chris, put it on off. When the system turns off, this should spring back and we shouldn't be able to move it. Right there, see? Now we can't open it, all right, good. Let me put the wire nuts back on and let's mount this actuator and see if it really springs back and turns off our chilled water. All right, so I popped the actuator back in place and opened up the hand valves. Hopefully it's not letting the water through. We're about to set the system on heat. There we go. Heat is on. And this valve is closed. Let's go ahead and check some temps. All right, so we got 82 degrees at the moment. The heat is on, actuator is on, it's calling for heat. So it's definitely doing a bit better. Wondering if I close that hand valve by hand, if that would affect anything, but we do have some improvement. As soon as I closed that valve by hand, temperatures went up right 89.2. Seemed like we weren't going past about 82 degrees. So now the actuator does respond. It does work, but it doesn't close that valve all the way. So that's why when I closed it by hand, the temperature went up. Yep, 89.8 or about 90 degrees. So pretty much in this scenario, we had a bad relay that turned on and off. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. We replaced that. Then we were mixing the heating with the cooling. We had a bad actuator stuck in the open position. I changed the actuator. Now we tested that. It does open and close, but unfortunately the valve that it's sitting on is faulty because it doesn't close it all the way. See, we're at 90. So the idea here would be to change the body, the valve itself for the actuator. So right there, the valve body is what needs to be replaced. It is in such a tight area. Wondering if maybe I can make a recommendation and change it somewhere here where I have more access. It really doesn't matter. You know, as long as we're on that inlet pipe, anywhere on the line should do fine. It's just the fact that the shutoff valves are right there. So I might need to drain the riser to do this, but that's just like a ridiculous space to change that i mean that's a nightmare so that's pretty much it we have a valve that is squeezing some water by so we're gonna wrap it up here that valve needs to be changed but at least the cooling does work and you do get a bit of heat and at least it's not blowing cold air on you when you call for heat and <laughs> hopefully they switch over to heating for hot water in the system soon if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe i'll catch you all next time